What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new electric scooter. This is the Navi V50. This looks and feels like a very well-made scooter, so definitely looking forward to trying this one out. So taking a look at the specs, in the front we have a 350 watt motor with a peak of 750 watts. Right here we have a 10 inch pneumatic tire. As you can see here, the motor is on the front on this scooter, while most scooters have it on the back. I haven't tried a scooter with just the front motor yet, so definitely going to be interesting to see how that feels. Looking at the brakes, we have a mechanical disc brake in the back, and then we have an E-ABS brake in the front, which is basically resistance added from the motor that will slow you down while you're riding. Powering this scooter, we have a 36 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery. We have a nice silicone deck here which feels like it has lots of grip the only thing i'm not a fan of is it has these little ridges here and as you can see little contaminants get stuck inside of it so when you try to wipe it down some of those stay there and it's a little bit harder to clean but other than that it feels good it has a nice grip to it another thing i like about the scooter is you have the charging port right up here typically on scooters it's down here somewhere somewhere hidden you kind of got to fumble around to find the port and it's just a little more tedious over here it's much easier right there on top of the deck looking at the lights we have a built-in front headlight and this is also a auto sensing light as well so when you're riding around and it gets dark it's going to automatically detect that and turn on by itself coming to the back we also have a built-in tail light which also lights up when you brake as well coming up to the bars you have a thumb throttle your power button coming on this side they made a unique little contraption here so this right here is the little lever that holds it in when you fold the scooter but it also doubles as a lever to ring the bell so nice little combination there i haven't seen that done before and then right up here you have the brake lever which controls both the front and rear brake coming to the center here we have the screen which is also very unique as well usually scooters have that little screen that's stuck here in the bars or a little small screen here but this one looks nice and modern definitely a lot better than what most other scooters have and looking at the screen, you have your mouse power in the middle and your battery gauge here. And the right side, you have your drive mode selector, which you change by double tapping the power button. Another unique thing on this scooter I have not seen before, hard to see on the sunlight, but now you can see it hopefully on camera. But it's this little icon right here. It's similar to what you would see in your car when you have low tires, and that's what it is as well in here. It'll send you reminders on your screen to remember to properly inflate your tires. So this scooter does have app connectivity as well and this is what it looks like so right up here you can change your drive modes and it tells you the different speeds each drive mode has as well then right here you have your estimated mileage your current mileage on the scooter your average speed and right here you have a locking feature so as soon as you swipe this as you can see the scooter now says that it's locked and if you try to move it it starts beeping like that and it's adding resistance onto the scooter so as i'm trying to push it you can see i can push it a little but right until it gets right there it starts adding a whole lot of resistance that makes it pretty much impossible to wheel it away i mean i guess you can just pick it up and steal it still but when they take it home they're not going to be able to ride it so good little security feature there and then when you come back to the scooter you just swipe it again and that'll unlock it and let you uh, ride it as you can see here, this scooter does have cruise control, so you can enable or disable that from here. You can put your tail light to be on always. And then, as I said earlier, this is where you have the automatic sensor controlled light. So again, you can control it manually, or you can leave that on and never have to worry about it. Last but not least, right down here, we have energy recovery. So similar to a Tesla, this has regen. So as you brake, it'll add resistance to that front motor, and it'll use that resistance to build energy and charge up your battery. So a lot of good customizations and tweaks so you can personalize this scooter from here in the app. So like most other scooters, this is a folding scooter as well. But this has a unique feature that I have not seen in any other scooter. So with a regular scooter, you fold it down like this and it folds down to a compact shape. But as you can see, you still have all this wasted space that's from the bar sticking out. This one has something unique that solves that problem. So right down here, you have another lever. You pull that out. That releases this. And now this turns sideways. And as you can see, it now folds with a much, much smaller profile. Definitely a cool feature that hasn't been done before. And hopefully this catches on with other manufacturers because this is probably the best way to make a folding scooter design. The only thing I don't like, my only gripe about this, is the screen faces the outside here. So I feel like it's a little more susceptible to damage. 
I would have liked it better if this screen like faced down or maybe faced that way. As is facing the side, that kind of makes me a little nervous if I was transporting it around. So while I have this scooter folded, there's one more cool feature about this scooter, and that's this little rubber piece right here. So what this is, is an Apple AirTag holder. I don't have an iPhone or an AirTag to test this out. But basically, you put your AirTag right there in that little slot. Then you have a little hole right here. You just stuff this in there. And now you have a hidden Apple AirTag right here inside the scooter. So if someone steals your scooter, you're easily going to be able to track it. So definitely another cool security feature to protect you and give you some peace of mind if your scooter does get stolen. Last but not least, this scooter is IPX5 waterproof, weighs 36.8 pounds, and has a max payload of 265 pounds. All right, so first impressions, this scooter definitely has some torque. For a 350 watt scooter, I was not expecting that. When I just started my ride right now, I had it on sport mode and this thing just lunge forward which something you get on a 500 watt scooter 800 watt scooter but typically a 350 watt scooter is going to be a, a snail as far as getting up the speed goes but this one has some uh, kick to it on that sport mode right now in drive mode it's definitely a lot more chill a lot more easier to ride so overall this this uh definitely feels like a good scooter so far initially i wasn't sure how i was gonna feel about this front motor because i do have a dual motor scooter and when I put that one on front motor only I always felt like it was pulling me forward and it was kind of more difficult to turn and I just didn't like the way it felt very much but this one feels a little more natural it feels very very comparable to the rear motor so if you're looking at this and you're not sure about it like I was I wouldn't worry about it once you get going you really don't feel the difference brakes on the scooter definitely very good a lot of these entry level scooters lower entry level scooters they'll have brakes that break well but very uh not smoothly so you'll hit that brake and just from barely tapping on it very lightly it'll feel like it wants to throw you over the bars but this one i feel like it has a lot of movement in the handle and you could stop very smoothly but if you press on it it definitely has the power to uh stop you quickly as well uh, it looks like this seems to be very accurate because right now it's showing 12 miles per hour and i pass by a speed sign over here that monitors traffic and it was also saying 12 miles per hour i mean it's possible that, that sign could be off too but i mean if it's used to judge traffic i would trust that it's properly calibrated so it looks like this scooter is actually giving a true reading as well let's go ahead and try out this how it feels on the sidewalk not not bad not bad either i have a few scooters that don't have suspensions but they're like the honeycomb tires and those when you go over the bumps it's a lot more stiff and you feel every bump a lot more i mean this one you still feel it because again there's no suspension but since they're pneumatic tires it does a decent job of soaking it up so if you got to go over some rough roads or sidewalks for a bit it's not going to be an issue if you're going across something very rough for a mile or so then yeah it's going to get uncomfortable but for regular everyday roads it feels perfectly fine to me yeah, I've tested a lot of scooters around this price range and so far these are some of my favorite brakes for an entry level scooter. I do have the regen set on low so that might be why it's stopping a little more smoothly but it's a very very smooth stop. All right a little bit of uphill here some cheaper scooters would slow down in this area so let's see if this one slows down. Uh, we dropped one mile per hour not bad right in that drive mode 12 miles per hour up the hill it only dropped down to 11. it's not the steepest hill but it was a decent sized hill that would make some scooters or e-bikes struggle a little bit all right now i got it up to sport mode Let's see what the top speed on this is all right 20. can we go a little more all right so it looks like it's capped off at 20. it did feel like it had a little more give it didn't feel like it was topping out I feel like if there was a motor unlock or something, it might be able to do 22, 23, as it did feel like it had some good power still left in it. But uh, 20 is not bad. I've had a lot of 350 watt scooters that only go like 17 or 18 miles per hour. And I feel like a lot of 350 watt scooters, because it's a lower wattage 350 watts, I feel like they throw cheaper motors in there because it's, it's an entry level scooter, so they can get away with it and why not, I guess. And you would feel it right around that 17 or 18 just kind of just barely pushing along and kind of struggling but this one feels like it has some juice left in it 
So definitely impressed with this scooter. Feels well made, I like the features on it. Feels nice and powerful. Well, not powerful if you want something that goes very fast, but if you want an entry level scooter, it's good for a new rider or teenager, or just in general, if you don't want a scooter that goes fast, this one definitely delivers. I have cruise control off right now, but cruise control is definitely something I like seeing on scooters. If you're riding more than a few miles, your thumb will get tired, you're holding that down. But when you have cruise control, you just turn that on, hold on the throttle for a bit. After a few seconds, it usually kicks on, and then from there, you just coast and uh, enjoy your ride. I don't want to bash the other company, but the other scooter that I have in mind that this one blows away, that's also a 48 volt, 500 watt scooter. This is a 36 volt, 350 watt motor. So again, not all motors are created equal. Look at reviews, look at user feedback. Do not go solely based on what the company advertises. Yeah, so overall, this is definitely a very well-made scooter. It, everything about it feels good. I have no complaints. It has a lot of unique features I have not seen in any other scooter. So yeah, if you happen to be looking for a scooter around this speed and price, this one is definitely, definitely a great option to look at. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.